so you can see what's going on. Quick refresher again. Tonight's agenda. Replace the existing internet toy box. Not with the new one. That would make too much sense. This is the new one, by the way. But that one's already built. Where's the fun in that? With uh, this here, Sparkfun Redboard. Whoa. Earthquake in California, by the way. Which is where I am. I'm just down the street from... Uh, did you guys hear about that train derailment uh, last week in California? The little tiny backwards area. Yeah, that's where I lived. That little say, it's a smartphone redboard. It is pretty. I like it. It has the time for product breakdown. It uses the SMD version of the FL, I assume, 328, what is it, 328U. Uh, AVR microprocessor um, from Atmel. It's the SMD version, so it's a little tiny one. So do not burn it out because you ain't gonna unsolder that puppy without a whole lot of trouble. So, but uh, I mean, I always like one one thing I like about the SMD SMD versions is there's a little room. If you think about a little room in terms of altitude, there to cram something, uh, a little tiny breadboard, or something gives you a little extra room. Right, on account of there's not the usual how much chip taking up. The, what is that chip usually? 16, 16, 32 pins, I think. Uh, yeah, 32 pins, 24 pin. So, it's uh, it's pretty. It says Sparkfun Redboard on it. We may read the specifications, uh, but it is pinout compatible with the Arduino Uno. It has the power supply. It has the um, jumpers and the ISP header so all the standard UNO stuff um, <clears throat> you know if you've compared the UNO with the other versions of the Arduino you all know that among the features that distinguish it um, particularly are, are, these finger, are, are these features it does still retain the ISP header it has the USB connector it has a reset button uh, it has the full um, height female headers and the uh, DC jack. Those are pretty much the key components, in my opinion, of the of the Uno, as, you know, as opposed to the other boards. Some of the other Arduinos don't have um, uh, full height male headers, or they don't have ISP header, or they don't have USB, or they don't have power jack, or you know, I think they all have some reset button. I mean, why not? So tiny. But, um, so this retains all of the core competencies of the UNO line. So now with uh, with little ceremony, we're actually going to completely disconnect the existing internet toy box. Ah, yeah, so, as, so like I was saying before, this is a chance for me to talk about it. So the history of the internet toy box. Internet toy box is currently disconnected. History of the internet toy box. So I'm a solar performer. I do lo-fi beats and stuff like that. Noise, actually. Lo-fi beats, drone, noise type stuff. And weird avant-garde stuff on, uh, on Twitch. Uh, I don't have a lot of cameras. All my cameras are cheap. And I wanted to get the most out of them. I didn't want to be... I thought about things like having some sort of foot switching mechanism, like building some sort of pedal where I could switch between camera views and stuff, but I'm already doing enough. Um, and I do all the, I do finger drumming, so both my hands are busy. I don't use uh, like patterns or sequencers or anything. So my hands are busy all the time. And uh, I'm gonna need some more light here. You guys will probably be blinded out for a bit. There we go. All right. Um, all right, so anyways. In, uh, in this pursuit, I found that it was cheap to add cameras to my show because there's like a $9 Logitech camera. Did you realize that? Yes. Logitech makes a $9 webcam. Anyways, uh, I think it's their 170 or 170. So you can get some Logitech webcams. Yeah, I get to pull all the jumpers out. Um, you can get, uh, get yourself some Logitech webcams. Pardon me. Um, and that's cool. So I had like two, three cameras going. By the way, the real constraint here is yeah, how many cameras your 
system and your OPS can handle uh, or your video stream software so uh, anyways get up to like two or three cameras and that's cool you can only fit so many on the screen at once anyways and as I said other constraints regarding system resources and such uh, come into play at that point so uh, as I stated before I had to look into you know thought about various options using like foot pedals or something like that to switch cameras I didn't really like that and there's a couple of issues with it um, for one thing it um, at least I couldn't figure out how to do it with OBS without cutting the sound without stopping the sound signals and at least the way I'm doing it and so that was an issue for me and anyways it wouldn't have mattered because as I said I'm pretty occupied already while I'm doing my show and the last thing I really needed was to be using my feet for that so <clears throat> Anyways, I'm, I'm hoping to add a kick drum pedal to my show pretty soon, so I'm going to be needing my feet. Uh, so, that's where I came up with this idea of putting the audience in charge of the cameras and, uh, and or processes. I thought, you know, I could also write like a program, uh, a little program that, you know, sweeps the camera or does interesting motions at different times. Or I could put a, a human in charge of it, you know, maybe a friend of mine or a mod. Or, um, or whoever is interested, maybe you want to be a remote control cameraman, and uh, you can you can practice your skills on a live uh, on a live performer. So that's pretty cool. So this is how I arrived at this position. Um, after one of my shows, uh, I just uh, I don't know felt like doing it, so I kept uh, uh, I kept my stream open and I started coding the the thing and uh, building the circuit for it and I think that was like a 24 hour stream when I did that so it might have been like an eight hour stream it's crazy long sometimes I do this I just go through these mammoth work sessions and I'll just crank right through it and that's what I do okay so we have a uh, Arduino Uno oops there's still something hooked up to it there's a bunch of you can't see it but there's a bunch of cables hanging down over here um, all over the place so um, here we get, I have the Arduino Uno and the uh, and a, the blank breadboard which had a, a resistor on it because I was using that for an LED and uh, that's it now we are back to zero and if you have yourself an Arduino Uno okay so if you've got your Arduino Uno compatible and uh, a breadboard and a servo or LEDs or something like that and some wires and stuff you are in exactly the same spot as me right now and uh, I'm ready to go uh, I think the toy I'm gonna start with will not be this servo but if you have a servo and a, uh, and a Star Trek to mount upon it then that's cool hopefully we'll get to that too but we're gonna start with an LED and that will be easy sort of thing this is just an LED um, hot glued into a cheesy assembly that I put together so quick two or three minute break and um, and then we'll get started so gather your stuff together go to that url and um, get the components that you'll need there the software components and um, then we'll get started again in the background background music provided by Beat Pete. This is vinyl session number two, Beat Pete on YouTube, B-A-T-P-E-T -E on YouTube, <laughs> Y-O-U-Tube. Okay, so um, I'm going to need a screwdriver. I uh, also started work on other variety of projects on, on those shows, so now I've split off this separate weekly show. It's going to be every Wednesday at six o'clock. PM PST that's 1800 hours PST that is GMT minus 8 for the rest of the world and I am putting this in wrong how did I do that oh, okay. and uh, yeah it's every week and it's gonna be just like this gonna be beats and um, 
necessarily always my own stuff. I get tired of listening to me. Uh, beats, there'll be uh, bits, lots of code, and uh, bots, robots, circuits, stuff like that. Every week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. PST. If you like it, tell your friends. If you don't, tell your enemies. Yes, well, hey, Houston, we have power. Incidentally, their green status light on this is like super green, and the boot up light is blue, which is cute. So you get uh, a kind of Christmassy look going. <laughs> Huh? Can't open device comp for me. Wait, why not? Um, I usually do all of my development on Linux on a Linux box on the other side of the room. Which, but this should not be taking this long. Uh, generally, this is over in like 60 seconds tops. And this is not a good sign, actually. Do that, I'm gonna take a break, anyways. Um, that will get people if anybody has uh, caught wind of this and gone, Oh man, I want to do that. And you've got an Arduino Uno or Uno compatible, and you want uh, to make your own internet toy box, i.e., put your users in control of remote control cameras and stuff like that. That's what we're doing tonight. Oh, look, it can open it now. That's what we're doing tonight. And you will uh, be able to follow along. So, uh, if you've got an Arduino Uno compatible and or a servo and some other stuff and you want to put users in charge of them, uh, you've been following the Internet Toy Box project, that kind of thing, uh, tune in later tonight, 8.30 PST, for Beats, Bits, and Bots, uh, a part two, as we continue setting up a brand new internet toy box on the SparkFun Redboard, and it'll be cool, trust me. So thanks for tuning in, if you have so far. Um, if you like this stuff, tell your friends. If you don't, tell your enemies. If you like the background beats tonight, uh, look up Beat Pete Vinyl Sessions on YouTube, B-E-A-T-P-E-T-E. Quick recap, um, tonight's agenda, we're building an internet toolbox from scratch, which isn't really as complicated as it sounds. Uh, at the end of this process, you too will be able to, ooh, that's kind of cool, you too will be able to put your users in charge, or your viewers, uh, in charge of remote control cameras and lights and other stuff like that. Okay, this process uh, should take about 30 minutes, but has taken about uh, two hours, uh, probably going on three hours in two separate shows, in two separate streams at this point. Why? Well, okay, I found out, by the way, so before the uh, break, before the hour-long break, uh, we were trying to upload the Internet Toy Box controller code to this SparkFun breadboard, which is an Arduino Uno compatible board provided by SparkFun. Also, quick reminder in the background, beats tonight uh, provided at the moment all Lord BG2, a mix of Lord BG2. You'll find them on YouTube and Bandcamp and other venues. B E A T J I T Z U Z U B Jitsu. Uh, Lord B Jitsu in the background. Okay, so before the break, uh, we had uh, attempted to upload that code to the new red board. However, uh, that didn't work out because, and here's why, so I found out why exactly what was up with that. It took me a while to, it's all Windows stuff as you imagine. So it was um, uh, FTDI drivers, so I had updated those at some point, I don't know, and I hadn't updated Arduino 
which meant that AVR dude hadn't been updated anyway. So it was a whole clusterfuck there. So I uh, got that handled and uh, now I've rebooted. I don't have the chat open, uh, so forgive me if I'm missing you in the chat. Um, I'm going to set that up right now while we're talking. So um, if you are ready to set up your own internet toy box, put your viewers in charge of cameras, servos, lights, things like that. Get your Arduino Uno and or compatible ready and uh, it's going to be cool. We're going to finish the setup now. Uh, over the break I had gotten that whole quagmire ironed out and now the drivers and all that kind of stuff is up to date. And, uh, I verified that by updating, by uploading a test version of the Blink code to the Blink example to the Sparkfront Redboard which is what's running on there right now. So thanks for joining us again. Thanks for tuning back in. And um, and we're about to proceed here. So get yourself ready. And the next part, uh, we'll be uploading the toy box controller code uh, to the Arduino. Uh, you will find that on the URL down below in the lower left of the screen where it says hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey just go there and there you'll find the code uh, actually there you'll find a link to the github and on the github you'll find the code it's not uh, really complicated and it doesn't have to be it doesn't do much of the work the serial bridge does almost all of the work also on that URL you'll find a diagram uh, which maps out the relationship between the serial bridge and other components in the system. Uh, okay, so here we go. I'm going to compile it just for the heck of it. So once you have it, uh, you compile it. You'll, you'll need to for the target platform. Make sure, of course, that you've got the right, uh, you know, stuff. You got to have the right board. Um, as I said, it doesn't have to be an Uno, but an Uno compatible will do. I covered in the previous session uh, uh, exactly what criteria I meant by that. Again, in the background, beats are Lord Bijutsu. It's uh, Lord Bijutsu Mix Part 2. You can find it on YouTube. It's really great stuff. So, check that out. Okay, so now we're ready to upload it to the board, and I'm going to upload it, and there it goes. Yay, okay. So no problems uploading it after, as I said, I straightened out the whole quagmire that I had with the FTDI drivers and such. So, no big, that's handled. Now, um, now the board should be ready to go, actually. Um, so, now that we've got the, uh, the toy box controller, that being the microcontroller part of it, up and ready to do business the next thing to do is start up the serial bridge so the serial bridge again you will find in on the um, github as well which is on the hackaday.io address uh, hackaday.io slash trimester monkey and forget my throat actually uh, it's a little bit scratchy I haven't been doing many talking shows so I have to get back in the swing of that But I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, stuff. Some people have told me that they really are. And so I do plan to be doing more of these shows. This is actually a special long version of a, of a regularly scheduled weekly show, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. PST, that is GMT minus uh, 8 for the rest of the world. 6 p.m. PST is, uh, what am I calling it? Beats, bits, uh, beat spots. It's something like that. Anyways, <laughs> it's this stuff. There's going to be beats, and uh, there's going to be uh, electronics and robots and code, bits, bytes, and bots and beats. Um, so, here we go. You'll find on the Hackaday.io, you'll find there are two projects there for you to peruse, one of them being the Internet Toy Box, 
uh, and the other one being the really insanely popular IQ0 uh, genetic algorithm based robots, which we're not going to play with tonight, I don't think. Uh, quite worn myself out already on this. Pardon me. Um, uh, so on there, you'll find a link to the GitHub and uh, also some a little bit of uh, further information about components. Not really complete build instructions yet, but I'm working on that. And uh, those will be there soon. But you will find links to the GitHub. Um, on the GitHub, you will find these components. They're listed right here. You'll find the uh, Arduino code, that's the toyboxcontroller.ino. That's the code that we just uploaded to the Arduino a moment ago. This code here. So you'll find that. Why am I using the wrong keyboard? I've got another keyboard down here. It's much faster. Okay, there we go. So you're gonna find that. You will find a mbtcpclient.jar. This is the bridge, serial port bridge. Uh, is as it is referred to in diagrams and elsewhere. You'll also find this toybridge.cfg configuration file. It's an example configuration file. That is to say, you can't just take it and use it whole cloth. Um, you'll need to modify it. There are comments in the file that tell you how to modify it, and uh, they're pretty informative. Um, and we're going to cover that anyways in this here thing. You're also going to need a working RXTX. What the heck is that? Well, I'm, I'm working on making that installation process and instructions much more much more clear, but uh, if you uh, if you don't um, if you don't have it, you'll know. <laughs> That's not very helpful. Okay, but uh, there is actually included in there and a link here also to MFZ RXTX, which is what I've been using. Um, and so you can install that in the same directory and it should work although I've been having a little bit of difficulty setting that up. I should have better instructions for that part of the process soon. So when you go to the GitHub address, uh, here we go. Uh, here are the files here. You got your jar file and uh, there's even a, there's a batch file example for Windows for starting a, a, jar, a jar file. Um, and the DLL files for the uh, RXTX and, um, and other components as well as the example configuration file. Now I'm going to show you with the example configuration file here a little bit about it. So if you look at the file on GitHub, this will be the same one that we're going to look at in a minute. You'll see there's, um, there's you know defaults for most of the stuff, logical defaults. And, and then there are comments also explaining the other things. Um, the uh, parts that you absolutely must fill out, assuming you're using Twitch and assuming that um, you know you don't really want any major changes, um, um, you really just need to set your server channel here, which is your username, and your login name, which is really the same name uh, for pretty much everybody. Um, and, sorry about that and your, uh, uh, your OAuth credentials, which we'll get to in a moment. And, uh, and that's about it. Now, you will, you will want to set which uh, port your uh, controller is connected to, and you can have more than one. So if you do have more than one, which you probably don't, you can put a comma and separate them like this. So on a Windows system, there'd be something like COMP4. Um, on a Unix system, which is actually where the system was originally developed and where I still maintain it, uh, it would be something like this. This would apply as well to other Unix C platforms. Um, these are the platforms, these are the parameters that are not used. Um, and uh, you'll need to fill out this parameter, the bridge peers. Uh, I recommend you put your own username here and then the name of your chatbot. Uh, if you're going to use Moobot, don't worry, Nightbot, those are both included already. So that's the configuration file. We're going to actually see a real one of those in just a moment here. Um, now, of course, it, uh, it won't matter where you put this stuff in general.
um, won't matter much where you put this. I've put it in a directory called source. Um, where did I put it? I probably put it in source monkey box. Yes, I did. Um, in there, I've got a separate directory, and you don't have to, but you might find it convenient to have a separate directory for the bridge, uh, which I'm calling MB client, but you can call it anything you like. Um, and and for the toy box control code, which are completely separate, and you don't really have to touch uh, the toy box code usually. So, anyways, this is a directory structure you might consider using. Put it all in the source directory or something, monkey box or something. Uh, it used to be called monkey box. Uh, call it toy box, whatever you want. In there, put an, a client directory and a controller directory. So, in the client directory, you're going to put uh, the the batch files, all the components of the, actually all the components from the GitHub um, uh, repository. Um, yeah, I've got a bunch of different files here you won't find on the repository because they're for my own purposes, but you won't need all of them, only the ones on the repository. Um, so the configuration file, um, toy bridge data CFG, uh, this is the file right here. But uh, this is my production configuration file, so we're not going to use that. Instead, um, I'm going to rename that. And um, and I'm going to make a new one. And I'm going to start from. Uh, Weird. Anyways, I'm going to start from the, um, hmm. look, there was a typo in the first version. Um, okay, well, good enough. And I'm going to start uh, from the GitHub version, just like anyone who would be watching would do. So just take the, take, take the, thine, uh, holy controller code, <laughs> uh, from thine GitHub address. And paste it into thine configuration file. And there was much rejoicing. Um, that's really ancient stuff there. Okay, so uh, this stuff, so I'm gonna go, so I'll just run right through it and you can, maybe I should get people. Uh, like on the video replays is really what I'm thinking, by the way. If you're thinking, wondering why this guy even cares if there's no one watching or one person watching or one lurker. Hello, lurkers. Love you guys. Um, okay, so give you a moment to catch up. So you got your toy bridge config file open and you're ready to go. You pasted it from the GitHub address. Good. Give yourself a cookie. Um, so here we go. These uh, you can skip unless you're um, unless you're debugging stuff. What they say is you can ignore these failures in these um, if uh, if you want, and it will continue operating even if there's a severe problem somewhere down the line. Um, so, um, so these uh, are already populated. If you're, I say, if you're using Twitch, uh, I say again, if you're using Twitch uh, and you're using it in the current means that I'm using it, you won't need to change much of this. The login creds are mandatory, and you'll have to put, paste this in here. But first, let's do this part. Um, you've got your IRC uh, server host. So if you are using another host for whatever purposes, I don't know, experimental or whatever, change it here. If they're not using the standard IRC TCP 667, 667 port, uh, change it here. If you want the toy, uh, the bridge to say something different besides what it usually says, which is this when it comes into chat, then change that there. Um, this is where you will put your name, your username, which is also the name of your Twitch channel's chat venue. So uh, in 99.99% of the cases, that will just be your user's name, uh, your Twitch username. Um, this is also your Twitch username. In 99% of the cases, it is also the same, but some people have names that are slightly different because it has a space or something. Um, and this is where your OAuth credentials will go, and we'll get to that in a moment. Login syntax is not supported, okay? Um, we will come back to login creds, I promise. So you can't, you can't run anything yet until we set the bridge ports. So uh, I'm gonna change this, actually. 
so that it'll be more like yours because you probably just have one of these that you're setting up and the one that um, we are using is connected as you'll recall uh, I'll show you again um, we're setting up the SparkFun Redboard, which is an Arduino Uno, and it's connected on COM10. So you'll need to know which COM port, um, regardless of operating system, that your Uno is connect is your uh, that your board is connected to, to which your board is connected. And what happened to the music? All right, there we go. You don't have to worry. Don't have to worry. Uh, okay, good. So I shut down. By the way. So. Put that port here. Yeah, again, if you're on a Unixy system, it might be something like this. And these are fully supported. I developed this system originally on Unix. So on Fedora 20. Uh, oops, not 20. 10. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put COM10 because that's what it's connected to. And uh, these are disused at this time. Don't worry about those. If you were running on Unix, by the way, you should un. Uh, uncomment these two lines. Okay, uh, this is. I think this applies on um, Mac also, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, over here, and this is also mandatory. You will need to put. Well, you'll really, really want to put your username right here. So for me, this is Die Master. Um, and this is. You'll see later. Um, names listed on only the names listed in this list uh, are permitted to send commands via the bridge to the uh, unit low level commands high level commands can come from uh, whoever you desire but uh, only the ones listed on this may send low level commands so typically you would put yourself for testing and your chatbot and any other chatbots so yes you can easily use this with nightbot as well um, my production configuration also has a few mods from my channel so that they can do uh, advanced testing if they like. I trust them to do so. If you are using a, a Lego uh, NXT and you can do so by blue, Bluetooth or I, uh, by USB, although I haven't tested that for a while, you can set that parameter here. And it works the same as the other, the other one. You just set the uh, COM port symbolic name operating system symbolic name of the COM port in question and uh, that's it we're done with the easy part the only part is this login credits right so I know you might not have seen this before and OAuth is an authentication protocol that you don't really need to know much about and you probably don't want to and I certainly wouldn't blame you um, but that's uh, the cool part is there's this guy who made a uh, who made a little um, uh, who made a little application to conveniently get yours uh, from Twitch? Basically, you go and get these. Um, spelled it wrong. Um, you can go and get it from um, from them. They're really interfacing to uh, to Twitch itself in order to get your credentials. Yeah, this is, this is a good one. Right, so here, um, twitchapps.com slash TMI slash uh, is where you could go. There are other places, but this one I have used. And I've just shown mine on the internet, so I'm gonna blur that stuff out later. I thought most of this through except for that part. Um, and then you paste them right here, which I am not going to do because there's no need to show them once again. But let's say that they were this. Okay, <laughs> something like that. It'll look something like that, but there's going to be numbers in there too. Actually, I think it's hex. Uh, no, it's not hex. Anyways, so you're going to paste that in there, and then you're done, right? Um, and you exit from that. Save your file, and... Um, You'll, you'll have to have already taken the uh, jar files and uh, put them in the same directory. Oh, we covered that a little bit, uh, I believe. So again, take the other components um, that are at the GitHub address and drop them in your directory. All in one directory, like, that works pretty well. 
and uh, hopefully you know how to execute jars. If you don't, um, I've included a Windows bat file, which you might read, which you probably should read, because uh, it really only works for my installation. Um, I want to see what was in there, and all I did was actually run it. So, um, this isn't fair actually to anyone, because uh, earlier I was messing around with my paths and stuff. Um, Okay, so when you run it, well, mine's going to fail because it's going to try and log in and it has the wrong creds, which is fine. Because um, I'm going to restore my production uh, configuration right after this this little example run. But uh, you will see that it starts up. It did, in fact, still iterate the ports and all that stuff. It hasn't connected to chat yet, so... Um, interestingly, it doesn't seem to know it did not successfully connect to chat. Figure out what's up with that. It should have known. Oh, okay, there we go. It thought it connected to chat, but it actually did not connect to chat. And it was eventually Java error, which is good. There should be at least. Um, so, again, go to the GitHub, take all this stuff, dump it in the same directory. There's a batch file in there that will run. And when you run it, it will do this after the configuration stuff. So, um, I'm going to read through the startup real quick because. It actually gives you some, I, don't know, I won't read all of it, but it gives you some insight into what the configuration options do and all of that. So, as you can see, it, it starts up as soon as you run the jar file. We did so with this Java command right here at the top. And you'll see that I provided the path to the MFC RXTX um, library that is the DLLs. There's one jar and two DLLs, I believe. Uh, although for your installation, you may have different requirements. And then it, it runs the jar file and the TCP client. Uh, uh, it reads its configuration from the toy pitch configuration file. As you can see, it's assigning all of these internal variables to your settings from the file. Um, it says the login name is your Twitch login name here, so that wouldn't have worked anyways. Um, so you, you need to configure that, obviously. It read the COM ports and then, and then connects to them, does some little operating system stuff it has to do there. And uh, it starts up the RXTX library, uh, attaches to the COM ports, and then logs into the chat. More fails to do so in this instance because of what I did to the poor thing. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, is we're just going to pretend that I did what you would have done, which is configured your toy bridge. Why is that thing flashing? Uh, Toybridge.cfg file, and I'm just going to restore my production configuration. And actually, I'm going to modify it uh, because I moved the comp ports. So. Com ports have changed a little bit. Here. You know, I've also thought I could just list out all the com ports I might use, and then I would not even have to worry about it. Um, and you'll see later why it's so easy to address multiple com ports, anyways. So um, now I should be able to run, just run it, log in, it does the st startup. You'll see my bridge peers list is much larger. I've got some of my elite mods out there shout outs to d dog 747 and phoenix blaze and nightbot shout outs to johnny verdon and uh, tree styles all you guys cool shout outs to green pop and uh, all of my lurkers love all you guys lurkers power the channel and it's connected so down at the bottom oh sorry that's off might be off your screen a little bit this up no, no, it's not. It's cool. Down at the bottom, you can see the bridge is connected to chat. Yay. Um, and there it is. It says monkey box. 0.2. Um, actually, you know, I was just thinking. Now when we run it, it will say, when it connects to the chat, well, no, because it will say, and the message does appear to come on your behalf, because after all, it is you. I suppose it would be possible to configure a separate account 
um, to do that uh, for you, like log in under that account instead of you, and then messages would appear to come from that account. Uh, but I don't know. There we go. So now when we start up, it says "sup fam, uh, monkey box 0 0.20." I think I'm gonna take the rest off because it's just heinous. Anyways, you get the idea. So now that it's connected, uh, we can do stuff like. What I don't get is why is it flashing? That's not supposed to be happening. Oh, I, you know what? I think I know what's happening because there's some uh, new RGB code in there. Um, okay, so I should be able to, for instance, uh, say B1P13D0 and should turn B1. Oh, that's power? What is that? Why is that thing flashing? Okay, so. Uh, well, actually, this is a good time for a break. So now that you've got this far, you've got your Uno loaded. Yours won't be flashing like this. I think this is specific to the spark button for the world. And uh, grab yourself your holy uh, LED or whatever other two or three conductor device you want to put users in control of and get ready because we're about to hook it up. That's going to be having a cool. And uh, you know, users will be able to control um, your device from the chat venue uh, if you've been following along. I mean, after probably several back and forths, I'm sure, because I know I miss some stuff. Definitely. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we're going to take a quick probably 10 minute break and uh, get your Unos and your LEDs ready and your servos and your users and stuff. It's going to be fun. In the background, again, Lord BG2. Um, next part two, you'll find it on YouTube. It is generously provided by YouTube uh, purveyor Dragon's Blood. Just check him out on YouTube and check out Lord BG2 on YouTube and Bandcamp and all other venues. Lord B E A T J I T Z U J I T Z U Lord B G2. And uh, we're back in ten. That should be nine twenty four. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you viewers for allowing me that break. Let's see again in the background Lord B G2 B E A T G2 J I T Z U Great stuff, you should check them out, Bandcamp. SoundCloud is all over the place. Um, okay. Well we're ready to go. We've got our Sparkphone Redboard all loaded up. I have here an LED mounted in a sort of glue gun assembly spiel. Nothing really fancy going on here. And uh, I've connected it to a three con uh, three conductor connector, but uh, only two of them are connected. The white lead is connected to the positive terminal, and the ground is connected to the ground. Thus allowing me to use one of the digital pins on the Arduino um, to turn things on and off. Uh, to turn the thing on and off. Okay, so let's see. Why is it so quick here? Uh, the conductors on mine go ground, power, signal. So, you know what? I'm just going to do three of these and I'm going to jump on. I propose that we stop the fight. Well, my special arm contains 18 stars. So if you, if you can be just one of these stars, we'll save you.
You don't have to worry, you don't have to worry to run out of cards, run out of cards. I got two aces in my hand, this is in my hand. Okay, we're back. So you may be interested to know what you uh, saw me doing there. Once I had, uh, had identified which, uh, which conductors on this LED mount um, were which, I found, by the way, that the, uh, uh, on this one, the, red conductor, the power conductor was actually the positive lead, not the white one, the white one's inactive. So I uh, hooked up the ground conductor to the ground on the Arduino, and um, and uh, then after running the, uh, the, power, uh, the power lead through this uh, resistor, you saw me connecting it to the 3.5 volt power supply directly um, on the board. Uh, I did that a couple of times just to make sure that the connections were right, the LED worked and all of that. Just for a second, uh, um, you know, tapped it on and off as you saw. And, uh, and then actually I decided to move the wiring around just a little bit for convenience and after I did that I repeated that test uh, just to make sure that I hadn't, um, hadn't screwed up anything that was correct before. So now that I know that it works and that if it receives a um, high voltage on that, if it receives high on that uh, pin, I uh, plugged it into Arduino pin 8. Um, I know that it will turn on. At least it should if everything's working the way that we've observed so far. Now here's the cool part with, um, with the thing. We don't have to change anything. There's no configuration changes or anything. To change it, we will simply say uh, V and which board so we'll put a number here so this means a number there'll be a number there it means number you'll never type that in and then we say p uh, hey what's up just got lad um and then we say p and which pin in this case it's going to be pin eight right because that's the one i plugged in into and i say d and uh one to turn it on and uh, all low-level commands are followed by a semicolon like that. So that should turn it on, except for this number thing. So where do we get this number thing? I'm gonna say it's B1 right now, but where does that come from? Um, that comes from the configuration file. So let's go back to the config file. Um, config file, where are you? I think I'm just going to open another prompt, actually. Give me a moment here. Okay, so, uh, oh, for replay 
for the purposes of replay viewers, I'll point out that someone came into the chat. And that's why I said, hey, to just got that. Sometimes replay viewers are like, what the hell? Who are you talking to? Um, you like talking to yourself? Because that happens too. Okay, so I have the whole thing put in a source directory and a directory called monkeybox, which is what it used to be called. And there's the configuration file. So let's take a look at the configuration file. And you'll find, you may recall from earlier in the show when we went over these options, one of them was the bridge ports option. Uh, and you'll see there are two ports listed there, COM6 and COM10. Again, these may vary depending upon your operating system or whatever. Um, so go COM6, COM10. So these are numbered in programmer style, computer style, so that such that uh, the first one listed is B0, and the second one listed is B1, and so on. There we go. So, there we go. Now, uh, anybody can turn the lamp on and off uh, from the chat. All they got to do is try E1P08D1, semicolon, to turn it off, and B1P08D0, semicolon, to turn it on. Wow, well, that's like a uh, major pain in the butt, right? Um, yes, it is. So, here's where the next part of the story comes in. And uh, the diagram again, uh, you will find this diagram. Uh, I don't know if I could load it, but yeah, I guess we can load it. Yeah. I'll just load it up right now. Okay, in the diagram at hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey, in the internet project, uh, internet toy box project, there are other projects there as well uh, to be distracted by, and you should check those out, they're fun. Um, so, so far we've covered the uh, serial bridge, which was the Java component we set up and configured earlier, which you download from the GitHub, and the uh, toy box controller, which is the Arduino, in this case this is part of the breadboard, uh, which is cool and a hell of a cool colored and I totally recommend them, I like it. Um, and the uh, installed the uh, Arduino code on it, which also is at the GitHub address, and we have connected a device, being this here LED so far, a very simple two-conductor device, about the simplest you can do. And uh, there's no further configuration, all of it is done with uh, low-level commands at that point. And, uh, why does this thing want me to ban myself? What happens if I ban myself? Okay, um, so we've got the low-level commands are all set up. Uh, well, they work automatically. There's no configuration for that. Um, but you will want to have higher-level commands like lamp on and lamp off. That is where we get to the diagram where it says community chatbot right here. So this acts as a sort of uh, syntax reflector, and I have a couple of other schemes underway for this too. Where you could, uh, or a user, a viewer, would say something like stage, you know, mid, or stage uh, 93, to stand for stage position 93, or maybe lamp on, or lamp off, to turn the lamp on and off. Um, uh, so that gets intercepted by the, well, yeah, not intercepted because everybody else will see it too, but uh, you tell your chatbot to watch for this phrase, stage 93 or whatever, and uh, lamp on is what we're going to do right now. And then, it's, and then to send back to respond to that uh, in the chat venue with the low level syntax to turn that thing off, right? So, in other words, to turn the LED off was B1P08D1 semicolon. Uh, sorry, I typed it wrong. B1P08D1 semicolon. And that turns the lamp. Uh, should it turn it off? Yeah, there we go. That turns it off. And B1P08D0 turns the semicolon, turns the lamp on. Um, and we want users to be able to say uh, lamp on. Right? Uh, or something like that. Uh, 
So that's how we do that. And that is subscribed in that diagram. So let's go do that. We're going to go to Moobot. Uh, actually, just for that, but I'm going to click my um, whatever that is. So it doesn't matter which one you can use. You Moobot, you can use Nightbot, you can use your bot. Uh, we'll use whatever bot you like. Just make sure that they are added to uh, that list on the configuration file. Remember where it said bridge peers. Just make sure that the bot is added to the bridge peers list, and that's cool because the bridge will only accept low-level commands from those users who are, those usernames that are listed on this uh, bridge peers list. So put your mods on there, put yourself on there, put your chatbot on there, whatever else you want to do. Ooh, does Nightbot have a uh, YouTube already? Because I know they were working on that. And I think that is just awesome. If they do. Okay, so uh, with most of the uh, chatbots, you will find something like this, where you can set up a custom command. Uh, I'm going to delete these two, because you can see they were clearly existing for my uh, other production install. So here's how you would add, um, how you would connect uh, your internet toy box to a, how you would connect the chatbot, uh, your chatbot of choice to your internet toy box. I'm in here in Nightbot, and I'm going to add the use the add command feature. I'm trying to move it around so that you guys can see what's what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm going to use the add command feature, and it's uh, fairly similar in, in pretty much uh, all of the bots. Uh, we're going to call it lamp on. Actually, let's do lamp off first since it is already turned on, and. Um, here it is. It's supposed to send a message, right? Like subscribe to my YouTube channel. But we're going to have it send this instead. B1 P08 D1, D1 semicolon. The command to turn the lamp off, right? And here's the cool part. If you like, you may restrict this to moderators or subscribers or whatever so that only your subscribers can turn the lights on and off. That'd be cool, right? So, and uh, the cool part is I don't have to write this part. And uh, you can have a cooldown, you can have aliases, things like that, and you don't have to yell at me for features that you want that I don't have. Um, and see, look, I already, I already screwed it up because I called it lamb off, and it's supposed to be lamp off. Okay. So this way you'll have your own control over how things get handled. Uh, you can some bots allow you to limit things by time, uh, by user access levels, um, things like that. Um, so while we're in here, you know, you know what? I'm oh, sorry, I'm rushing ahead. Now we're gonna test it, right? So Nightbot, I'm pretty sure is already in here. Um, so if I do lamp off, it should send a command. There we go. To turn the lamp off. D1P08 D1, but it did not touch line up. D1P08 D1. Oh, you know what? This is funny. Uh, Moobot also responded. I have... It's a test thing. So that won't normally happen to you. Um, B1P08, D1 semicolon. Okay, it's in there. Let's check the log. Bridge Peers. Accepting command from Moobot. Uh, accepting command from Pure Nightbot. See up here, I'm looking at this. So it did accept the command. I sent it to COM10. weird thing is there's actually two of them that Moobot also has a lamp off command. And this I kind of I'm gonna change this now. Uh, the Nightbot version. The Nightbot. Uh, I'm gonna change it to uh, light off. The Nightbot versions will be light off and light on. And there's a minimum five second cooldown I have to know about that. Okay. So now I should be able to say 
light off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, some collision between the two chatbots. So I don't use two chatbots at the same time for the same command. Um, you do use two chatbots all you like, but uh, now I'm adding the light on command. And that's going to be what? B1P0AD0 semicolon. Yes, they all end with some semicolon, and you'll see why later. Ooh, is it so we can do more than one on the same line? Yes, it is. And you are very clever for thinking that to yourself. Okay, so now we're back in the chat. And now I should be able, or anyone, users, whoever, should be able to say bang light on. And the bang is part of the chatbot syntax. Um, you can adjust that however you want. And as you see, the light turns on. Um, we're talking about this light right here, by the way. I know it's kind of hard to see from the lighting. To face the camera. And uh, then we say bang light. L I G A T off. And the light will turn off. There you go. Light on. Light off. Ta da! And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, for uh, servos, you do the same thing, except you connect the um, signal of the servo to one of the analog pins, and uh, then send it a an analog signal of where you want the servo to go, say like analog 180, and it will send it to the 180 degree position, assuming it's that kind of servo. Um, and it handles it handles that part itself. So. Just hook that up to one of the animal, any of the analog pins, and that'll do fine. Um, uh, if you want to use an RGB element, uh, you could up it, hook it up to any of the three PWM pins and uh, handle it that way. And uh, that has worked fine on the other in that toy box over here. So, my cameras are currently not remotely controlled because I haven't set those up yet. Um, setting them up, as I said, would be like just, just like I would say. So I will take this um, lead from the servo, uh, from the servo uh, upon which the stage camera is mounted, and uh, simply plug it into the breadboard here. And like I say, connect the ground uh, to the ground and power to the power, and connect the signal wire to one of these other pins. Like say, oh, 11 might be good, 9, 10, 11 would be good, and. Um, and uh, then just simply send a command. You don't have to modify the configuration file uh, after you add or change peripherals. Um, you don't have to change anything. You can make any changes that you need to do in your chatbot configuration um, with all the, their fancy UEs and stuff. Um, so that's why it's designed that way. I actually am adding uh, the capability for it to parse high-level commands itself and handle that, but um, it's not a big priority because I know immediately people will want role-based access controls and time controls and alarms and rewards and stuff. And that's going to be like a whole different thing. Um, so I'm sticking to this for right now. Um, and there are some really interesting new directions that I'm taking it to. So stay tuned to the project. Um, Hackaday.io slash DieMasterMonkey. Again, you'll find everything. You need to know about it now and going forward. Uh, background music. All you need to know is Lord Bijitsu. Uh, Lord B E A T Jitsu J I T Z U on SoundCloud, YouTube, Bandcamp, everywhere else. It's really awesome. So if you've uh, been following along this or on the YouTube replays or whatever, you uh, now have a functioning internet toy box. You can use for your Twitch stream. Put users in control of devices, cameras, stuff like that. And to have fun with them. And have a good time, and I hope you all do. Hope you enjoyed this stream, and hopefully the vastly improved edited version that'll show up on YouTube. Um, hit the subscribe button if you're into this or beats. My other shows are all about beats. Speed shows and the speed shows and the shows. So if you uh, if you can speak just one thing, so if you're into either of those, we'll especially if you're into both, click the sub button. If you like it, tell your friends, and if you don't, tell your enemies. Stay true, stay low, 